We made it. Yo, we made. Right, yo, I appreciate you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, I was over here troubleshooting. I had to turn to a tech guy real fast. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you hate that guy? Google everything, bro. <laughs> yeah, straight up. We, we we in here. We made it off the slave ship. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real, man. Yo, thank you for coming on to the Giant Nomad Podcast, brother. I appreciate it, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me. No, of course, man. Like, um, I was uh, chopping it up with Philly. and uh, Yeah, Philly that's my like, guy. Yeah, he was like, yo, you got to speak to my brother, man. Like, you know, he got this crazy line coming out. Um, and it's out. It's called Wash, but it's, it's spelled differently. So let's, let's start off. Like, how, you know, and you're also from the military as well. You're, you're a veteran as well, right? Yeah, I did eight years in the Marine Corps, and that's how I met him. So, let's talk about how that how that came together, bro. Let's tell something a little bit about yourself and everything. All right, yeah. So, how the idea was 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 I felt like it came from how all things come about. It's just a brainstorm session, right? You get together with some people, and you're like, "All right, if I were gonna launch a clothing brand, you got to start with a name, and what would the name be?" Right. So, I was just literally sitting on the couch with my girl, and I was like, "Yo." What would be the dope name for a clothing brand if you were going to start one? And we we're just going through names. And I was like, how about Wash? Because I know I wanted to do denim and I wanted to do unique washes because I felt like not a lot of people were doing that at the time when I came up with the idea. Or probably still aren't doing crazy washes with jeans. No, so no. That, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was the main <laughs> idea behind it. This, that's a little little game I probably shouldn't have gave away, but <laughs> 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 so yeah, I was like, all right, wash, and I'm going to have unique washes, because when you think about a typical wash on the jean, you think about like sandblasted jeans, or like a certain kind of fade to light, or like a light pair that's faded bleach, but you don't think about like a customizable wash, where you could like put a, a portrait in the wash, or a name in the wash, and have it, you know? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, so with any company, I feel like you have to find your niche or something that's unique that you can't get from the next brand. So I thought, boom, we already got the thing that sets it apart from every other gene out there. But that's, that's dope. Yeah, but when I started, I didn't, I didn't bring it full circle, and, and I realized pretty fast that yo, how am I gonna wash jeans? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't even know how to make clothes. So. <laughs> <laughs> so that's I'm a like, huge yeah. learning curve right there bro yeah that's <laughs> instant learning curve so i was like yeah I, mm. so i was like all right, all right well let me let me give it a shot and if i give things a shot you know i gotta go 100 percent. i gotta go all the way with this so i was like all right let me sign up for some fashion design classes and figure out like how to launch a brand essentially but i didn't want to approach it from like a shallow standpoint i wouldn't want to be like all right let me print my name on some gear, throw it out there and call it a brand. I really wanted to know like how jeans are made or how the diet process or everything top to bottom. So I instantly, I just started taking classes, uh, college classes for fashion design. So were you ever always big into fashion when you was younger or something, or did this evolve into something later on? Like, were you in the military? What does it, how does it all come about with the whole fashion? Yeah, so my mom was a fashion designer. She went to FIT in New York, uh, and uh, and that was back in in the eighties. Right. She was actually pregnant with me while she was there, but uh, she had to drop out. But she was she studied under Calvin Klein, and like she'd been doing that whole thing before I was even like an idea. Right. And uh, so fast forward, I come out. I'm just like this super super creative baby, you know. Like I I see myself as an artist, and like. Fashion is just one of my mediums. Like, I made mixtapes before. I made portraits before, murals. I can paint. I can do a whole nine. It was just like, fashion is what I came up with when I got out of the military. I was like, okay, how do I study something in the arts that I can monetize, like, relatively quickly? Right. And fashion is hard because it's, uh, it's, it's a very fickle business. You know, it's either you make it or not. You know what I'm saying? So it's... It's not it's not easy to come out with something. A lot of brands do fail. Oh yeah, absolutely. And so, um and we're still pretty much like in our infancy, even though we're not just starting out like for the first time. I feel like we got a lot done in the time that that we actually made it a legit business with like taxes and stuff. 
So how did you, um, you get into the military? <laughs> <laughs> well, long story short, I was just, I, I mean, I was a knucklehead, really. I okay. just wanted to like. So you had all um, this talent, but you were still a knucklehead. Yeah, I was, I was, I was a smooth knucklehead. I was, you couldn't tell me <laughs> shit when I was seventeen. Right. So, so, uh, but I had a lot of mentors that were Marines, oh. and and they kind of, they kind of snatched me up real quick. I got, I got literally like snatched up by the hands, like by a few Marines, and they were like, like pretty much stopped being a young asshole and I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it, yeah, and I skipped my whole entire senior year or not my senior year, my finals for my senior year. Didn't even show up. Wow. But like I, I had been very smart since a young kid. Like I would just go to the library and read dictionaries and encyclopedias. I just I was just thirsty for knowledge. Like I skipped second and third grade. So I was graduating like sixteen, seventeen. Yeah, so school was more of a confine for you than the uh, anything else because it wasn't yeah. giving you, it wasn't giving you what you wanted. Yeah, pretty much. So I was just like, yeah, I don't, I don't need this, you know what I'm saying? But my, I mean, even though I skipped so much school, my grades were still like just perfect. So it was at the point where like I skipped my finals, and the teachers were like, if you come and just like even get an F, like if you even test out like 50% on your finals, you can still graduate. <laughs> so, so I was like, oh, okay. So I just showed up like a week after finals, like school semester is out, showed up, took my finals, ended up still getting a B. And then, yeah, I hit the, I hit the recruiter. I was like, yeah, I'm good to go, man. Like, Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> so while you were in the military for eight years, was your was your creativity stifled at any any given moment? Like, did you kind of put that aside? Would you still, you know, hustling, trying to grind and do it while you're in the military? Absolutely. Like, okay. I didn't. Um, I mean, like when I was in the military, I had a group of friends, and we had like a car club, and like we would customize our cars and like our T-shirts and. Uh, and uh, Philly was in it too, and so like that's really the only creative outlet. But even then, it was like finding a creative way to kind of be an asshole. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it wasn't really like, right? All right, I'm gonna do something that contributes to society or really anything. It was just more of a like, all right, how can I get turned the most creatively? <laughs> so you're right. like, all right, we gonna pop this amount of bottles on this day, or we're gonna had this crazy party in Vegas or we're gonna you know like all right we're gonna promote for this club it was more like but still I it was definitely like I just knew the military wasn't where I needed to be in a creative mindset and I just felt like like I used to have to convince people I was in the military when I was in they were like oh no nah, you're not you're not a marine there's no way and I was like no for real like <laughs> wow <laughs> I was like, no, nah, no, nah, for real, I'm, I'm really in the military. He was like, get the fuck out of here. Like, there's no way you're in the military. I'm like, nah, yeah, this is what I do. And we're like, okay. <laughs> and so, like, just that was confirmation. I was like, yeah, like, I probably don't need to do this. Even though, like, I was smart enough. My thing is smart. It's like, because I, I just have one of those memories where you you just, I just remember things. And I, I retain information really well. Right. So, it allows me to be adaptable to a lot of situations, a lot of different things. So military was one of them. It's like, all right, you got to know some things. Boom. Like, killed it. I was like, E5 first, like, two and a half years. And so it was like, but I was like, I knew it wasn't what I wanted to do. Like, the order was cool. The paychecks were really cool. <laughs> <laughs> really, really cool. <laughs> like, three years in, I got a reenlistment bonus for, like, Ninety thousand. Jesus. Yeah. That was just up front. And then, yeah, up front. Well, no, Dang. I mean after taxes, you know, Uncle Sam would right, get you right. with that, with that yeah. one too. But <laughs> exactly. But damn, yeah. that's a yeah. Wow, so I'm bro. over here, twenty years old with like ninety grand in my account. Because <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get out after that first four. I was like, yeah, I'm done with this. And then Master Guns walks in the office. He was like. Hey, how does a uh, ninety thousand dollars sound? I was like, well, looks like I'm doing another floor. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. So, do you feel like the military was 
at the right time? Can you say you was a knucklehead? Did it did it give you some structure or discipline that you were lacking? Um, it definitely elevated my level of knucklehead. <laughs> it like it was like, oh, you thought you were a knucklehead before? Just wait, there's more. Like, <laughs> That's seriously, funny. like I as soon as I got paid, I went straight to Vegas. Well, why wouldn't you? I would do the same shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like <laughs> twenty, you twenty years old, you got a hundred bands, like. Can't nobody tell you shit, you know what I mean? Nah, not at all, man. You want to hear nothing from no one at that point. Right. So, uh, I mean, it did, I would say it put me on the back end on a good platform to do what I'm doing now because it paid for the school, schooling I needed to go to to learn what I know now about fashion design. Right. You know, I got a disability out of it. Like, it put me in a good spot where I could buy a house. You know, it does a lot for you. But like during, oh my god! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Damn, That's yeah. crazy, bro. So with <laughs> with Wash, you know what I'm saying? Um, and if people don't know yet, your name is Quran, right? Yeah, like and, the book. Yep, and I love it. And with Wash, you spell it differently, bro. And what was the, what's the whole like like what was the whole idea of the spelling and the meaning of Wash? Well, at the time, I was like super. Um, I just knew Wash was too bland, but at the same time, like I came up with the idea, it was like probably like a similar time off white drop, you know. Mm -hmm. right. But before all that, when it was just kind of like calling things what they were, and I was like, nah, but I need to take it. I need to go a little bit deeper, you know. And so I was like, all right, so. I was just playing with the logo, and I was like, all right, well, a way to bring it deeper is to make it an acronym. And so I was like, all right, and I was just playing with words, and I was like, I don't know, white vampires, stay hungry, whatever, like, <laughs> <Right>. just, <laughs> just trying to make a dope acronym out of it. And then I came I came up with Win Victory, Stay Humble, and as soon as I said it, everyone was like, I like, like it, I like it, I like it. And no matter who I asked, everyone was like, I like it. You know, no one was like, uh, and I was like, uh, that's all I need. Like, if it ain't broke, don't break it. So I just went with that. And then still to this day, people were like, what is, what is Wivish? What is Wivish? It's a conversation starter. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's like instant ice break. And then you tell them, boom, when victory stay humble, they're like, oh, I love that. Like, right. Absolutely, bro. Because I'm checking out your designs and stuff, man. And, and I'm looking at them right now. Oh, and um, looking out. I appreciate it. No, absolutely. And it's you really, really good. And right now you're in LA, right? Are you from LA or Oh no, I'm in San Diego. So what happened was I got out the Marine Corps and just never left. Ah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's good weather out there. Yeah, it's it's excellent out here. You know, and I get a lot of love from even LA too. I got the invite to uh, LA Fashion Week this year. So That's what's up. Yeah, I, I I be I get a lot of love and people are watching it and I appreciate it because it's like, well, it's dumbfounding to me how like this idea just, you know, like sometimes you you have an idea or you just brainstorm businesses and you're like, all right, like yeah, this could maybe work or whatever. But it's like just the fact that I had an idea and then went for it and it ended up working out is crazy. No, it's it's, it's a testament to your drive. You know what I'm saying to what to what you want to do. You know and. I always tell folks all the time, like, you know, just do what you love, man. Like, like I'm doing this podcast. I'm also a writer as well. So it's like I'm constantly trying to get to what I want to do. And I tell folks, like, you know, if your nine to five isn't for you or school is not for you, then drop it. You know, absolutely. It, you don't have to be, you don't have to fit the status quo. That's the yeah. problem right now. That's the problem right now with the whole, like, you know, with multiple generations is that they kept on following this this kind of format that really didn't fit people's ideas. Yeah. You know, absolutely. And the whole whole thing of working a job for 30, 40 years, collect a pension, those days are over. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, now, like the days of like going to school to get a four or six or eight year degrees and getting a dream job right after that is almost over. <laughs> like, absolutely, absolutely. And that's the thing <laughs> now that you know the people are seeing that, you know, that school right now is a gimmick. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's, it's all about just trying to get your cash flow out of you. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I knew I didn't really want to, like, after the whole experience with the military or whatever, I knew I didn't really want to fit in another box of, like, 
Absolutely. Yeah, traditional box. So and with I the felt, fashion, with the fashion, I'm sorry, cut you off. But with the fashion school, oh no, you good. Did, did it give you what you want as far as like straight up about fashion, or is there other things around it? Like you know, like traditional universities add other shit you don't need. Oh yeah, this definitely. Well, I don't look at at it as like a curriculum you don't need because with fashion school, like from my experience, it was mostly like. It was almost like elementary where it was like cut and paste these magazines and make a collage and like stuff like that. But they also had a super technical side to it, which was which was what I was interested in. So when I enrolled in school, I immediately took the hardest class first. Smart. Didn't know how to sew. Didn't know anything. I didn't know what was what. I walked in. And then the teacher's going over the syllabus, and she's like, if, first thing she says, if you don't know how to sew, get out of this room. And then, like, ten kids walk out. And I'm like, well, I'm not going anywhere. Like, I'll pay for this fucking class. Like, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, all right, yeah, I don't know, but I'm here. Right. And then immediately we just start cutting out patterns, and I'm like, what the fuck? What is a pattern? Like, <laughs> I don't even know what this tissue paper even means. It's just a bunch of like markings all over it, whatever. And I'm just going to do it. Like, I'm just going to monkey see, monkey do it pretty much. Right. So, right after class, I hit my homegirl because I know she made, she used to make these uh, back when the rock tees were hot, you know, the Iron Maiden tees. Yeah. And then you would bleach them and like make them into dresses. Right. That's what she did. She was like, popping on her IG. So I was like, I know you got a sewing machine. Like, yo, teach me how to use one. So I drove from class to her house and like made my first little Iron Maiden tank top. And she told me, she was like, all right, this is a bobbin. And then everyone at that point was like, yo, you're a little kind of too ambitious right now. Maybe you should start with the beginning stuff. And I was like, no, I've got time for all that. Like, right. <laughs> Cause, you know, like military is like mission accomplishment, like get this done. And I was like, yo, like I'm trying to kill it right now. I don't know anything. So how do I learn? Do it. Right. So that class that I'm talking about was actually a design and collection class where it was a keystone class for the whole program. So it was the last class where you make a whole collection for the fashion show the following year. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> and I ended up I ended up with an A. That's what's up, bro. Yes, so I started making my first outfits. My first one came out fire. It's on my IG somewhere. But it just came out way harder than I thought it was going to because I was just, I felt like I was a bit more ambitious just because I didn't know anything. I was just like more eager to just kill it out the gate. And so I went down to like the digital design department is like sublimating my own tights and like just did some craziness like no one else was doing just because I felt like I had to prove myself to the staff and the other students that were kind of like all right this kid is fugazi like (laughs) he has no idea what he's doing and I was like all right bet and it came and ended up being the best collection in that show and like yeah I just I just killed it just because I, I had the drive no, that's dope. I can. So, with your design, like, to me, actually, so do, do you follow anybody in the fashion industry? Or are you one of those people who say, you know what? I don't want to look at fashion because I don't want it to be, I don't want to be influenced by what's out there. I want to create my own shit. Well, no. Like, um, I feel like there's a level of practicality that people don't understand in the industry. It's like you have your box to work in, even though. You want to be everyone wants to be super original, but they don't at the same time, like low key. They want to do their own thing. They're like, yeah, I'm different from everyone else, but kind of got to be similar. And I was just having this conversation the other day of like why every brand's like font looks like street signs right now. Yeah, and, yeah, and I'm like because it's trendy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's trendy. Not only that, but there's everything is super targeted when it comes to business. It's down to the. Absolutely. Just down to the, the, there's a lot of detail that people from the outside looking in don't really realize. And the people, the reason people are using street sign font right now is because people look at street signs for direction. Yeah. So 
to naked eye, you're automatically going to be attracted to that Helvetica font because it's what you're accustomed to, to look for direction. And a lot of people don't know that. Mm. That, so, that, that, that Jedi mindset yeah, shit right there. Yeah, right there. So it's just understanding how to play a, a different kind of game. Like in music, there's a different kind of game. Yeah, you got to be original to an extent, but you kind of got to work in that box of what's popping right now. Or sure. not even right now, but in the future. And, you know, fashion's always a year ahead. So it's exactly. like we're literally working in the future. So do you feel like you got to have, like, certain staple items? Like, pretty much what you're saying. Like, if you look at Ralph Lauren, the, the, the simple polo, he's had well, forever. Yeah. He's made the I polo mean, you, his. You no, know, Izod has, polo, has a polo shirt, too. But when people say, I'm going to give me a polo, you're not talking about Izod. You're going to get yourself from Ralph Lauren polo. You right. know what I'm saying? So and I feel like that, that's the direct result of sales. When you right. kill something, you kill one item. Like, for me, that's my denim jackets. Like, I kill that denim jacket aesthetically. You look at the denim jackets, and and they're just fire. Like the ladies really love them because it's it's. I mean, they're flattering to almost anyone, but they still have like a oversized kind of like fit to them. And then the next layer to that is I repurpose them out of jeans. So I'm making these denim jackets out of Levi's. Oh wow! Yeah. So. So the repurposing is like really popular right now with everybody, and and I don't want to be like necessarily like I'm a trend follower because it's out the gate I was it came from like being in a super creative space of like okay how do I turn this thing into like something more dope, right? And then a lot of I noticed that a lot of people like. I I influence a lot of people in a way that they're like, yo, man, you got me into like starting to make clothes or I'm trying to like cut and do something without even like diving into the fact that I went to school for it for four years. So it's like, I don't know, it's kind of like a catch 22 on that end. But yeah, there's fashion forecasting that literally tells you like what's going to be popping in the next year and then you just kind of make your own version and tailor off of that but i don't i don't work without like boundaries i mean that's just that's just one of the ways you fail in business you like something that's really good for you and you're in love with it but the consumer like doesn't line up and everyone's like oh that's weak i mean it's not going to work out too well so that's when you that's when you have your your exclusive set for the fall or winter or whatever, and say, hey, I'm going to make a limited amount of these designs just to kind of test it to see? Well, it's not even that. I feel like Wash is more symbiotic because we we make a lot of one-on-ones and we make a lot of, like, you're never going to pinpoint, like, all right, this is what we're buying for X amount of time. You know what I mean? Like, it's... Right. It's not like a Gucci drop where you're like, all right, I'm going to buy this one handbag and this is what I'm stuck with for the next like four months or whatever. Right. And maybe that's the beauty of being like not being in mass production where I just have to be stuck with like a run of a certain thing for a long time. And like, yeah, it'll go there later. But right now, like, I feel like I'm in a sweet spot where I get to be highly adaptable to like anything. And like with the fashion forecasting and my own ideas working out really well where I was... I was making all these bubble jackets, what, a minute ago, and right. I was making them out of sleeping bags. Oh, damn. Yeah, that's, and people, that's... yeah, people thought they were dope back then, so now everyone's wearing these crazy bubble jackets, and it's like, all right, like right, I'm already in my sweet spot, because I had a forecast and I had a vision. All right. And so when you repurposing items like Levi's jeans to a, to a jacket or a sleeping bag, to a, to a to a to a bubble coat, are you not buying this at retail? Are you are you getting this at wholesale or? Oh that? no no no! I go to a thrift store. So I go uh, to swap yeah. meets. I go to a thrift store. I'm a big vintage collector. So okay, a lot of people don't know, but I make a lot of money just selling straight up vintage clothing. Gotcha. Like like I got bins of just t-shirts alone. That's what's up. So I make probably like. I don't know, like five to eight grand a month just reselling vintage clothes. And wow. then, yeah, and then I just do my own brand, you know, like 
with cool stuff. Like, I look for both. So it's kind of cool because, you know, there's kind of like a little mini unspoken competition in the vintage clothing game where you go to a thrift store and there's like a bunch of guys looking for the same thing off the shelf. And they're like, oh, why is he buying this T-shirt? Or why is he buying these sleeping bags? And people will like literally go over there and stand next to the sleeping bags like I'm on to something they're not. <laughs> they don't even realize like I'm about to make it into a fire jacket. So it's like it's kind of right. entertaining when I go shopping. You know, it's funny. No, that's what's <laughs> up. Because that's that's your genius, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, for sure. And you're, and you're playing in your own kind of sandbox. Like, you know, you're having a blast with it. And, uh, oh, you know, yeah. I, so I gotta give my life. Yeah, I got to give you kudos for that because a lot of people – don't have the opportunity or even chance to. I won't say they won't have the opportunity because anybody has the opportunity to do anything, but a lot of people don't see the chance in themselves like you're doing right now because it's kind of scary, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, of course. There, there was definitely, like, more than 30 times I was like, yo, there's no way I could pull this off. And I was just like, all right, well, yeah, I'm not going to take failure as a as an option or answer, so how can we pull this off? Right, and then I just came up with some, and then I just taught myself. It's just like I'm really in a competition with myself. I feel like where I'm just like trying to kill myself over and over again, and it works out. It's funny you say that because uh, me and Philly was talking about that in the last uh, episode about being in competition with yourself, and um, how um, you know you have all these major brands, you know, and people think they're in competition with each other. And essentially, in the grand scheme of things, they may be because they're fighting for for brand awareness and and for that that body to wear their shirt, right? For that person. Yeah, sure. By the end of the day, you are in competition with yourself. You had to be better than your last line that came out, you know. And that's and that's all up in your own headspace. You yeah, know, it's like for sure. you want to keep on challenging yourself, and because you're gonna find your audience regardless. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no matter what happens. Yeah. Like the people that resonate with you are, is your market, it's your target market, like. That's right. the number one thing you need as a brand. Identity is your target market. You need to know that for promotions, if you're trying to do anything on social media related, you need to know down to the age, down to what block they live on, who your customer is. Absolutely. But like even deeper than that, you need to find out like emotionally, like what is going to bring them to the piece you're making that, and I, and I use it. I always say like, um, my number one customer you know because i'm making these pieces that identify and resonate with me even though i'm i find that i look i may look on the other side and i'm like all right i'm 30 and these kids are buying my gear they 19 you know what I'm saying maybe the a's don't line up but the mindset of like all right this is fire like this concept and then once it's executed you know we're like we're like pretty much like right there you know right right no, that makes absolute lot of sense. And then the fashion industry is is weird, man, because it's it can be timely at times where you know something comes out and it just fits. And sometimes it's a huge miss that too, especially since you have to do things a year in advance. But like you said, with the forecasting and shit. So if it's a certain pattern, like so you're the type of person that goes is gonna go with that certain pattern that comes out for next year, whether it's camouflage or let's say it's like a Hawaiian fucking shirt. Yeah, like I don't even go with patterns okay. at all. Like, I feel like um, patterns are as much, like, personal as anything else. Like, that's the one thing you have, like, creative freedom over is, like, whatever print or whatever you're using to stimulate the eye on a surface level. My thing is silhouettes. Like, what is a right. fit going to be like next year? You know what I mean? And that's what I feel like drives a lot of companies, like, in the dirt. It's, like, especially, like, people who are making jeans or any type of pant they're like all right yeah i'm gonna still try to make this boot cut jean but skinny jeans are popping right now you know like it doesn't necessarily matter what it looks like it's more about the fit right yeah you ever see um the golden era of the 90s coming back with baggy jeans and shit <laughs> I, I mean on every runway i feel like i look at they try to like hit it home with the big pants and it's just not sticking and right. that's one of the, that's one of the, I feel like the last, I don't know how many years, I want to say a good last four or five years, they've been trying to drive it home with the big pants and it just never stuck. 
in the small pants are just like they're they're sticking right now. <laughs> like, no, it's, it's been it's been a few years now. Yeah, you're right. It's been you know, and it doesn't like to go anywhere. But I I gotta say, like, I think well, because um, in Europe or yeah, in Europe or in England and London especially, the fit has always been to be fitted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they sure. they ran with the whole baggy stuff because of like the New York influence of wearing baggy jeans or. Or yeah, you know, like yeah, yeah. A, or like we're having different types of jerseys, you know what I'm saying? Um, but then when the fit came to a, even went into the suit industry to where the suits are now, I think absolutely, better. yeah. Like you see, you see, you even Steve Harvey, Steve Harvey wore the old school kind of pimp yeah. suits that was crazy yeah, big and baggy, suits. yeah. Uh-huh. And now he switched <laughs> up to where like you know is more fit. It actually looks good for the for the man's body. You know what I'm saying? Looks, you yeah. look more, more more beefed up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's just science. It's just like science and fashion. Like I studied that, you know, the different body types, like the X and the Y and the I, and right. just knowing your body type. But that goes, that's age old from like tailoring things that look good for your body. So, so do, you, like, do you think it's going to be um, a portion of that to where people are going to, because you know, the fitted jeans are still in, is that going to transition to people really trying to get more a custom fit for themselves? Um, well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of crazy things going on right now with like fit, especially, you know, how the iOS update came out with that update where you can measure boxes. Yes. So now brands are moving to, um, using that technology to, uh, where you can take a picture of someone and it'll give you their measurements. Well, yeah, cause there's a lot of kind of, well, I call them box closets where they, you, know, you can shop online. They'll send you six or seven outfits. And yeah. you, ch- you choose one and then you send the rest back or whatever. Yeah, so, so with, with the technology yeah. is getting more smart to where, like, I feel like it's going to be a shift of, like, people want things that, that they can personally uh, identify with uh, personally based on their body types. And, mm-hmm. that, and that isn't necessarily exclusive to people that want, like, a slim fit. It, it could be people that want a flowy fit for bigger people. And and that the fact of the matter is there's not enough clothes out there right now that are fire for bigger people. No, not at all. And yeah, they have they, all. have they have they have the very generic type of stuff and color and colorways too though. Right. You know, everything's a lot of dark coloring and stuff like that as well. So right. yeah. so I never wanted and that was the thing with my brand, I never wanted to like be dedicated to a certain like like size or type or anything. You know what I mean? I wanted it to be and I still wanted it to be symbiotic to where, like, you could order that thing from, like, a negative X to, like, uh, 10X, you know what I mean? And we'll still be in the same, like, creative space of, like, all right, that's hard, you know what I'm saying? So by you saying that, do you do you also employ, like, models to show that size range off in your well, in wash? Well, sometimes, like, the thing about... uh the models is i kind of like when you when you sign up for like fashion weeks and stuff like that Mm -hmm. they kind of just have their own pool you know right and then you make the clothes for them so it's not like i ever had like a like a a model range that was like higher you know what i mean right but definitely like i already have the patterns for like just bigger people in general like my, my little bro he's He's a big guy, you know what I'm saying? And and I make him clothes like on the constant. Like I came out with and that's the thing, like aesthetically, if you look at my clothing, especially like the menswear. Yeah, like, I like that red that red kind of fuzzy hoodie. Yeah. Got, yeah. Or the red outfits or like any of the outfits, like they're all on smaller guys, but they're all way large sizes. Yeah, no doubt. For sure. Because I want to be able to get that gear to someone that can fit it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So have you also, like, you know, the big trendy, trendy thing that people are doing today is, we've been a few years now as well, is, is the whole gym outfits. Just walking around the city, you know, wearing their gym clothes or whatever. Oh, yeah. I did the athleisure thing, actually, uh, last season with the ladies. I did a, right. a collection inspired by the 96 Olympics, and that resonated really well. But yeah, like I got, but if you look at that too, like all the jackets, they're, they're all swimming in everything they're wearing. 
Yeah. Because it's made for bigger ladies, you know what I'm saying? But it's still aesthetically pretty dope on like a smaller person. Because yeah, my thing that. is, my thing is like go big, you know what I'm saying? Like no matter what, go big, especially on like the tops, because um, I feel like with with ladies or women's wear they want something that's flattering and even even something baggy but cropped that like it still has the right measurements it can is more flattering than something that's tight and just ridiculous you know yeah okay, i'm checking that out right now where i see like you have this one joint where the, it's cropped but the sleeves are crazy baggy there's like extra material as a sleeve yeah for sure and then like the size and the waist it goes out like inches you know what i'm saying where it's like Right, you could throw that on a complete someone probably three, four times their size, and it'll still probably be a little big. So, what is what is your process? Like when you come up with a design, or something hits you, you like, do you just walk around and something hits you in your head and like, yo, I, I just got inspired, and like, what what is your whole process for a design? Uh, my process is really, I like to draw, and that's really where my creative roots started. It's like drawing and kind of kind of seeing it visually but i i look at it a big part of fashion a big part of business is being a out your own outsider you need to step outside of yourself look in and then ask yourself all right is that dope would i buy my shit if i was someone else right and, and that was my practical approach to fashion i didn't want to be like super cutting edge like oh this is like this way outside the box. No, I wanted to make fire gear that people would wear, but still be like completely different. So I figured I'll hit these levels by, you know, sticking with the repurpose thing. And then people would be like, what? This came from a, some jeans, you know what I'm saying? Or like, this came from like some other t shirts or like I installed shoulder pads and like sweaters, you know, just like like cosmetic differences that make something that's so simple completely different. Have you ever designed something that was kind of so like, I guess futuristic? Because I, I don't, I don't feel clothes have really been pushed enough in the past maybe thirty years. Like, like I said, like polo still has a polo shirt. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. men, men are still wearing button downs. You know what I'm saying? And the, the the big difference between button downs now and back then is the one is the fit and probably the freaking pattern on it. Yeah. So, for sure. so like, when is that new design? Because men's clothes is kind of boring. You know what I'm saying? Like, women get to wear a lot of different hot shit. Yeah, all day. You well, know what I'm saying? And men is kind of very traditional. Even the suits for men, like, women have all these different types of gowns they could wear. We have a fucking tux or a suit. You know what I'm saying? Well, my my idea um, of different in that sense comes from the tech sector, and I don't want to give away too much. No, yeah, no doubt too much gems of, of my ideas on it, but um, I think we need a lot more functional clothing that serves a purpose. A absolutely. So, okay. like, like how you have, like, uh, even, like, physical therapy realm where you have, like, a pair of type, you're walking around in men tights, yeah, that's cool, you know what I'm saying, for, I guess, being warm, but what purpose does it serve? Like, right. Like if you could stick some some uh, electric stimulators in there and and have it heal your muscles on the off time, while you're just uh, being being stagnant, you know what I'm saying, and not really being active, like that's cool, you know what I'm saying, like something next level to where it's like it serves a purpose, and and I think that's really next level for me. It's like. All right, not and not corny. Like, all right, this pair of shorts is gonna pop toast out. You know what I'm saying? Or like, <laughs> right. <laughs> nah. No, but I hear you saying like, you know, if it's if it is a swim trunk, is it really like, you know, you know, as you can it calculate my my swim time for me? Yeah. Like that. If I don't if I want to have a device on, but it does connect to my device somehow, or like to your yeah, point, exactly. You know, or if let's say I'm a scientist and and I had to go to Antarctica. Do I have like gear that's really gonna keep me warm? Mm -hmm. That has some device shit in there, and can maybe even watch my vitals if I'm sick or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be that deep. It could just be okay. simply like a pair of shorts that that release electrolytes into your system over a certain amount of time when you're doing a set amount of 
activity right. here. You know, like something that's practical. Absolutely. No, so that sounds that sounds dope. Like I think I think we're ready for that now. Yeah, I, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I think I think we're ready for that now. It's just a matter of cause especially like I said, with people wearing all this active gear, like his regular clothing now, you know, if, especially for women, like the clothes they get to wear now, if they wore this 20, 30 years ago, they would be considered hookers on the street. Oh yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? And now that's not the case. Even for men, they're wearing, you know, again, the tight jeans now. That, that, that was before. They were just like a certain type of person back in the day. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So now, and now that's accepted. So it's like, okay, well, what's next? And to your point with the tech industry, having wearables is going to yeah. have to go. Like, you know, who do you really collab with? To yeah, make and that's, that happen? that's different. I, uh, I reached out to this certain university. I'm not going to. No, no, of course. I'm missing them, but um, they're killing it in the wearable tech right now. And so I definitely want to do something with them, with the fibers and the gear, and, like, kind of make it a, um, deeper than surface level. Because I don't want to be surface level where it's like, all right, I got this boom box on my shirt and, like, look at the lights, you know? like <laughs> Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Just a simple lighting like, fixture or something. <laughs> yeah. Because even with but, your military background, that can apply to the military as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's a whole another. There's a lot of things that can happen with just the gear because at the end of the day, the gear is a necessity. Is right. Maslow's hierarchy and needs, like clothing is like boom, you know? Right. And so it's like, how can we how can we combine some of those those things in the hierarchy to where one thing can serve more than one need? Right. Damn, that, yeah. that'd be insane. Yeah, that would be insane, it. bro. That's 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 the next level. That's kind of where my my symbiotic thing comes in you know a wasp being a being a venom in the, in, I know. In the clothing game <laughs> no but but that's dope though. i think that's where you have to go in it and honestly and, and that's why i can know with my podcast i speak to minority I'm, I'm puerto rican from brooklyn i live in atlanta now and atlanta is wakanda you know what I'm saying? yeah i you know <laughs> and um and the fashion industry is the last piece that's missing in atlanta and it's and it's it's coming though. It's on it's on its way. You can see oh, this, yeah, for sure. this noise being made. But like you know, New York has the, the all three. That have, New York has music, you yeah, know, New movie, TV movies and, hub, and fashion, yeah. right? Yeah. And then LA LA had it. Not LA has it too. You know, the fashion LA's had it for over the last twenty five years already. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Especially since they have a lot of the, the textiles over there anyway, right? And then now Atlanta for the South is is going to be that next city to where. Is gonna have that trifecta of all three, that music, fashion, and movie type thing. Yeah, they're in New Hollywood right now. Yeah, yeah, they're in New Hollywood right now. I'm telling you, it's, it's crazy. So, and our, you know, we have a place called Buckhead, which is kind of like our uptown, like our Verdale Drive, our Fifth Avenue. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, fashion is coming to the south, and I think you're gonna see a lot of different things come out because people have been kind of like, yo, I want to make my thing, but I want to make it where I come from. Yeah, so, uh, absolutely. In the South, like, that. historically, you know, Atlanta's been one of the pioneers of Southern representation in the industry. Absolutely. Absolutely. Freaking So, yeah. with with your fashion shows and everything like this, like, with the with the strict deadlines of what, when you even have your dates to show off your gear and stuff, like, what is that like to get, like, you know, when you first got asked to come on, how, you know, how that happened, what did you feel like? Well, um, well, I did the school fashion show, you know, just to like kind of test test my might, Mortal Kombat style, you know. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and even that, like when the gear came out, it was just like like a roar in the crowd. Like I, you know, you hear the other kids come out with their collection, and it's like I came out, and it's like undeniably like killed it. And right. I feel like I've had that same reaction on every one way where it's like people are standing and people are just really invested in like, man, just wow. Like that's how you do it, you know? Right. And so I just wanted to, I just want to keep myself to that same standard going forward. Like no matter what I do, it has to be undeniably loud. Like people need to feel it. You know, when you feel the floor shake, you know, like, yeah, you know, you know, something is there that just, is different absolutely so when i got asked to do my well phoenix fashion week that's the first fashion week i did and that's the most recent one i did too i did it twice but 
that that one right there is intense. Like there's a whole lot involved, and that's when I I did it the first time, and I wanted to do it the first time because it's more about the business of fashion. It's not about the creative part at all, and that's how you that's how they run the whole thing. So it's like all right, let's take all these creative people and throw a business aspect at them, throw business seminars and make an investor deck and make your, it, it really gets your paperwork in order on that side of the fence. So like, all right, we need line sheets, we need tech packs, we need lookbooks, we need this by this date, you need to reach out to X amount of stores in your area, you need to reach out to X amount of stores here. And they just really give you a system that's really like it's like fail proof almost right so that 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 right there was one of the more rewarding things i've been a part of just because they they really take you through a whole process whereas like most other ones are just like all right here's your slot um send a press release to x amount of people try to get it popping the best you can they're like, all right, this is how you write a press release. All right, that's not good enough. That one's trash. Mike, like they ran like a boot camp. Wow. Wow. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So it's like you kind of feel like underwater most of the time, but it's all the stuff you need to know. If that's you want to make it. Yeah, yeah, because the fashion is brutal, you know what I mean? Like no one cares what you're going through or like what no, happened no. last week or nothing they just wanted they just it's, want their short shirt to be on point like <laughs> yeah that's it it's fucking cutthroat too man it's a cutthroat business man yeah for sure they're like i don't care if you, your mom died last week like there's a hole in my shirt <laughs> like, <laughs> right <laughs> which is insane bro so like with with that being said like you know said like are are you still making these items solely yourself are you going to china to get like the, the mass produced like no i still make most of everything myself right here at home so 24 wow. 7 i'm just making stuff and i i will go into production like eventually just right now it's just been super rewarding making things myself and like sure. i mean i'm not gonna lie i had a i had a few things sent back you know <laughs> had hey a, that's, part, that's part of business yeah i had to dish out a few uh, refunds, but I mean, overall, it's been pretty well receptive. So, no, that's fantastic. Like on, on the business side of things, like you were saying, like you know, um, you, you you constantly being consistent. You're seeing your your brand evolve and grow. And for 2019, like, where do you where do you want to see Wash at for 2019? Um, I'm trying to go more mainstream with my publicity and I, I feel like i need to get more in the pr section of like you know some hype stuff because i've been doing i've been killing it on the cool people stuff but now it's time to get some some major publications and stuff like that so, what's your main goal for 2019 with the brand uh the main goal for 2019 with the brand um yeah so the main goal for this year is just kind of like get it on the level is it needs to be with like uh marketing and stuff like that like um, I feel like I got a lot of moving parts going on on my end with like um a lot of dope people reach out, you know, and a lot of publications and a lot of um fashion staples, I feel like I just need to put that more on the front page to, so people kind of get a bigger picture of like, all right, this is bigger than that school project I started two years ago, you know? Right. Yeah, no doubt. Like you really have an eye for something, bro. Like your eye is definitely unique, and and that's what we need more of, bro. Like you know. Oh yeah, I appreciate it, man. No, yeah, bro. Like you know, I I think you know a lot of cats gonna be going to your website, and I, and I see on your website you have a lot of vintage stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I see like your your new stuff as well. I love your distorted tees. You have your Obama tee as well, which I love. Um, oh yeah, you got to you got to make something that speaks to the people, so. Yeah. Um, I got a bunch of like probably what you would consider like hype gear right now, but I'm just making I'm just having fun with the stitches, you know, that in on a platform that speaks to people. So and also stuff I'm personally a fan of like ASAP Rocky or Travis Scott or whatever. I got 
right. you know, the tees on there. It's just something that's visually stimulating. I feel like it's an art form. So people should be able to, it's more, I feel like fashion is art dealing, you know what I'm saying? Like people it, should be invested in a piece that, that is aesthetically pleasing and speaks to him, you know? No, absolutely. I think, and that's what the people want. People don't want to look like everybody else anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, no doubt you have your cool stuff, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, your traditional stuff off the rack, you know, everyone freaking wears, but you don't want to go to a fucking party and three other people have the same shirt you got on. Yeah, that's 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 the nightmare right there. Yeah, and and, and that's even coming to play with being with shopping for high end shit because everyone's trying to get the new high end shit anywhere, right? Mm-hmm. And and even then, someone else may be walking in the same shirt, same pants, or whatever, coming in the door. Everyone wants to be freaking unique. And yeah. I think I think with, with your eye, with what you are, are popping off of right now, like no one's that I've seen so far is doing what you're doing right now. Oh uh, yeah, like. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Like, I seen a few other guys, like, you know, do one thing or they'll do handbags or they'll do t shirts or they'll do pants or they'll do a thing. But I feel like this is more like a jack of trades where it's like, I'll mess around and make a biker jacket out of curtains. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, so I want to keep it that way. And I definitely want to, like I said, in a, I kind of want to be the, I want to say the test the Elon Musk of this game, but I definitely want to bring bring people something different that an experience that that hasn't been had before. Let's let everybody know where they can find you, bro. All right, you can find me at Wash Official. That's W V S H Official dot com. You can find me at Wash Official at I D again. That's W V S H Official on Instagram and W V S H on Facebook. Yeah, I'm gonna put all those links in the show notes, bro. Like, thank you so much for your time, brother. You're super amazing, super talented, bro. Like, you guys need to follow him and buy his shit. <laughs> Good looking out. Yeah, listen, <laughs> what he said. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I know I'm gonna be I'm a fan already. I'm definitely gonna be a customer. You know what I'm saying? So out. you know, for real. So we're gonna make that happen. People go out there, go to his website, go to his IG, follow him. Now, let him know how much you love his shit, because this is what we need. We gotta, we gotta self promote. We gotta promote our own. You know what I'm saying? And, and this is the way we do it. So, um, yo, yeah. mad love to you, bro. Let's keep in yeah. contact. Yeah. Yeah, of I want to, I want to see what you got for your fall collection. You know what I'm saying? So, oh yeah, it's going down. <laughs> so let, let's let's make an appointment for for the fall so we get you back on the podcast, brother. All right, good looking out, man. I appreciate you. Appreciate the love, and yeah, look out for me, man. I'll be making some noise. Oh, absolutely, Karan. You're doing your thing, bro. All right, man. Much love.